Okay, so in today's math lesson, what we were doing is taking a look at finding the surface area of a rectangular prism. And we notice that we're going to, we notice we have a length, and we have a width, and we have a height. And this is the key to the whole thing, making sure you're labeling all of your parts and pieces. Now, normally when we laid this out as a net, everything was laid out as a rectangle, and everything was a length times a width, and a length times a width, plus a length times a width, plus a length times a width. But now, things are a little bit different, because we don't just have lengths and widths. Now we have lengths, widths, and heights. And each of these rectangles, so in order to find the area of each of these rectangles, different things are being multiplied. For example, this guy here in the front. This guy is a length uh, times a height. Okay? Because this is 7 and this is 7, and that happens to be the height. And this guy is 15 over here, so you have a 15 times 7. But it happens to be a length times a height. Okay? But depending on which side you're actually finding the area for, um, that changes what dimension you're going to need. And we're also going to notice that we have, we still have six sides for this thing, and we have three sets of congruent, or three sets of pairs of congruent sides. So we have a, two bases, one is the top and one is the bottom, okay, and those guys are congruent. We have a right side and a left side, and, or a left side and a right side, and those guys are congruent. And we also have our front and our back front and our back, and those guys are congruent. Uh, but be careful because depend, you need to know which dimensions we need to multiply in order to find those particular, uh, the area of those particular sides or faces. So where do you want to begin? Well, I like to begin with the base, the two bases, one on top, one on the bottom. Well, in order to calculate the area of those bases, we're going to need two of those three dimensions. One of them happens to be the length, and the other one happens to be the width. And since we have two of those guys and they're congruent, when I set up my formula, I'm going to say that I have two sets of length times width. Okay? So this gives me the area of one of those faces, and the fact that I have two of them, I'm going to multiply that expression by two. Okay? Now that's just for the top and the bottom. We also have a front and a back. But the front and the back is a little bit different. Because the front here, we're not going to multiply the length and the width to get that. We're going to be using the length, but we're actually going to be using the height. The height happens to be 7, and the length happens to be 15. So in my, in my formula here, I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure that I'm writing this accordingly. I'm going to use the length, and I'm going to multiply that by the height. Okay? So two down, one to go. One more set, or one more pair. We had the left and the right we need to take care of. The left side and the right side. So here's one of them, right there. But for this guy, in order to calculate the area, I'm going to need the width and the height. I'm not even going to bother with the length because it's not involved. So in my formula, I'm going to need two of those because it's another one over here. I'm going to multiply two sets. All right, so I'm going to multiply the width times the height. There they are. So I have accounted for all of my, I have uh, all six sides accounted for in my formula. And the only thing I have to do now, a couple more things actually. One is to plug things in and to write my expression. And that's kind of fun because all you're doing is replacing these particular variables with actual values. So I have 2 times the length and the width, and the length is 15, and the width is, is also 15. So 15 times 15 plus I need a, a length and a height. Well, the length is still 15, but the height is 7. Okay, plus 2 times, and, then, and now I need a width and a height. So that is a 15 and a 7. So 15 times 7. And again, uh, two sets of that, and two sets of that guy, and two sets of that, that guy. So what I need to do now is start multiplying. 15 times 15 gives me 225. Okay, you can thank my eighth grade math teacher for that. Multiply that by 2, and you should get 450. So there's my 450, plus 15 times 7. Now that one I didn't memorize, so I'm going to work that one out over here. 15 times 7, so that's 35. 7 plus 3 gives me 10. So 105. Now, don't forget to multiply that by 2. So that's 105 times 2. So that gives me 210. Plus, now I need my 15 times 7. Ooh, I did that already. Oh, 15 times 7 again. Oh, you know what? I could have written this out four times. But, hey, you know what? We'll just keep it like this. So here's my 105 again times 2. And here's another 210. Now, like I said before, since I had four sides that are equal, I actually could have just done four times 
15 times 7, but that's okay. We'll leave it like it is now. So here we go. Surface area. I need to add now my 450 and two sets of 210. 210, 210. Add them up. That's 567, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 870. There you have it. 870 inches squared. Okay? That's my total surface area. All right. So, one more thing I want to do here. I want to take a look at the cube super quick. Because the cube is kind of cool. Because that changes things a little bit. The cube actually simplifies your life. Because all of the edges, okay, the length of all the sides, are all identical. By definition, the cube, all sides are congruent. So, all the sides, all the edges and sides and measurements are the same. Now, that changes things a bit because in my surface area formula, since all the sides are equal, that means I can take just find the area of just one of the sides and multiply it by six. Well, there are no, well, there are lengths, widths, and heights, but they're all the same value. And since a variable can only have one value, we just say, uh, or just label everything just S. Everything is a side. And since they're all the same, we're going to take six and say, all right, so we're going to say side times side. That's going to, give, going to give me the area of one of the sides. And multiply that by six, and that gives me all of the surface area because that multiplies one side, or the area of one side, by six, and therefore I cover the entire cube. Okay? Uh, you can even simplify this further by saying, hey, you know what? Side times side, that sounds familiar. That sounds like s to the second power. So you can write it like that as well. And that's kind of handy. So let's solve this thing. So s equals 2 and 1 third. So what does that look like? Well, that's going to be 6 times 2 and 1 third to the second power, just like that. So I need to solve this over here on the side. So I need 2 to the third, uh, 2 and 1 third, excuse me, times 2 and 1 third. 2 and 1 third times 2 and 1 third. That equals 7 third times 7 thirds. And if I were to multiply that, 7 times 7 gives me 49. 3 times 3 gives me 9. So I have 49 ninths. Okay? So that equals 49 ninths. And there you have it. Okay? Now, don't forget to multiply this by 6. So let me put that back in there, times 6. So if I'm going to multiply that by 6, I'm going to stick that over 1 as a fraction. I do notice that I can simplify. I can divide both the 6 and the 9 by 3. And if I do so, this becomes a 2, this becomes a 3, and now I can multiply. 49 times 2 gives me 98. 1 times 3 gives me 3. Now I'm, not, I'm not going to leave that alone since it's improper. I am going to divide that. 98 divided by 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times, uh, which is wonderful. I don't have anything left. I bring down the 8. That goes twice. For 6, I subtract, I get 2. And there's my remainder, 32 and 2 thirds. So my surface area is 32 and 2 thirds. Uh, my unit is feet and squared. All right, folks, that's all she wrote. That's what we did today. Okay, thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.